So today I'm going to talk about uh, wearable computing ecosystem. So first of all, uh, my background, uh, represented earlier, so I'll be quick. Um, principal at Perpetual, a product innovation firm for uh, finance, media, and telecom. My background in wearable technology is um, currently ex uh, experiment experimenting with several wearable devices and APIs. Perpetual also built the first, uh, actually the world's first magazine apps. And um, previously had a background in device development for, uh, for a large telecom. So in this talk, I'll uh, give an overview of the wearable computing ecosystem. I'll talk about the technology uh, arena and also the product uh, area. And then I'll go over to a demo. So first of all, a brief history of uh, wearable computing. So um, in the 70s and 80s, there were a lot of experiments with wearable computers. There was um, a lot of um, um, calculator-based watches. And then that moved into vertical applications. Um, so the killer apps for wearables were sports-based apps, like the Nike Fuel Band. And that was just two years ago, where it just took off, and the market was ready for it, and uh, a lot of real adoption. And now, moving forward, we're seeing mainstream products like Google Glass, which I have on here, and uh, the Samsung, Samsung Galaxy Gear. So just some quick attributes of wearable computers. Um, they're typically hands-free, so no hands. They're always on. Um, they're environment-aware, so they take advantage of uh, GPS, of uh, physical attributes, of uh, uh, they leverage the camera, microphone, accelerometer, and usually also connected. Um, Usually they are paired with, uh, with another device, so I have mine paired with uh, my uh, Samsung phone here. And they're, also, um, they're also able to grab your attention, so they have like basic alerts kind of built in, so you know that uh, to, to pay attention. And interestingly, they all have, uh, most of them have an API platform, with a potentially active developer community. So one thing about wearables, what problem are they solving? Are they going to do, are they going to do well? So here's a, uh, some numbers about how many times people reach for their phone. See, the average user reaches for their phone to check their email or to, ch uh, to check their messages 150 times a day. And I think, I'm sure for this room, it's double that number. As engineers, you probably reach for your phone 300 times a day, some people even 1,000 times a day. So wearables will solve that, solve that problem for you. Uh, so look at the market forecast. This year has been big for wearables. We've seen real products come to market. Um, Samsung, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Gear, uh, as well as Google Glass in uh, limited, limited beta. And it's forecasted to really grow uh, very rapidly. Um, and it's projected to be a uh, $12 billion business in uh, 2018. So a quick look at the technology ecosystem. So across the board, like from hardware to display, the hardware is typically um, being developed by large cell phone manufacturers, um, but you also have um, developers of non-wearables getting into this space. So like Nike is bringing out their own fuel bands or their own, their own watches. And you also have a lot of brand new entrants, so a lot of crowdfunding initiatives, like the Pebble Watch was launched through crowdfunding. The software side, Android is uh, pretty prominent on these devices. Samsung runs Android, Google Glass runs Android. But you also have some very specific firmware running. Because there are so many uh, physical uh, devices, like accelerometers and cameras, there's also a lot of device drivers that are in play. Now, on top of this, you have an active community, uh, developer community, so a lot of APIs, very standard uh, JSON uh, payloads on REST, uh, on the REST API, and also some Java.NET ones. Uh, and then, interestingly, some um, 3D gaming-based um, programming coming up as well. For data, there's no standard right now. It's very application-specific, so it's an open, open field. And for visualization, um, that's displayed, in most cases, on the device, like monitoring of uh, whatever information monitoring. And also, it's, the display is usually also on the paired, uh, the paired device, or, or it's available online. So the technologies that become uh, prominent with this are sensors and event-driven programming, um, a lot of web sockets based, uh, based applications. And across the board, a lot of things that are uh, more tied to the physical environment from uh, um, 
electromyography sensors, accelerometers, and so on. So a whole new set of technology that, that, that you don't see on computers, on desktops, even on, uh, on most mobile phones. So the product ecosystem, we've seen that sports and fitness have been uh, early adopters of this uh, technology. We're seeing bracelets, uh, we're seeing clothing, um, T-shirts, which are uh, wearable enabled in sports. But also on the consumer side, let's say infotainment side, we're seeing a lot of growth in that. And that's across the board on all sorts of, um, all sorts of devices. Public safety is another one, like um, for uh, firemen or policemen. It's, an, it's a natural fit. And also healthcare is another one that you're seeing a lot of adoption. And then there's a long tail of other, other verticals. So let's take a quick look at uh, sports and what's, uh, what's happening with wearable and sports. So I think the big ones here are uh, the Nike Fuel Band and the Fitbit. They're doing pretty well in the market. And you see other entrants coming in. You have Adidas, MyCoach uh, is launched. Garmin Tactics just launched uh, this week. It's uh, GPS aware, very rugged, probably one of the most rugged uh, de devices, promises to be the most rugged device. And then the Fitbug, which is like a, a lower, uh, it's a more basic version of the Fitbit. Another one is um, the Under Armour E39. This is actually, uh, it's like a belt you can wear, and um, it tracks um, different um, uh, metrics on the, on, the, on the athlete's body. It helps coaches and uh, trainers to uh, understand and help improve the, the athlete's performance. And these are pretty powerful devices also. They have uh, you know, full CPU, a uh, good amount of storage, and um, sensors and monitors to track the uh, heart rate and other things. So I said most of these come with an API. So an example here is uh, the Fitbit. So this has an API, and it lets you capture information across the board. It's a REST API, and you can get information. You can get body information, um, activity information, uh, and all the way through um, you know, food and everything else. And it's basically pulled information from the sensors on the device. So it's a REST API model pulling information. So think about the power of that. There's so much you can do when you monitor um, your personal well-being. Next arena is uh, healthcare. So here, this is a very powerful mode. Like, uh, you see um, a lot of patients spend, spend time in, in uh, hospitals just to be monitored in the intensive care units. But now with wearables, they can wear kind of an armband, and um, doctors can monitor them from, from the hospital. And that way, it results in, uh, of course, cost savings and uh, convenience. And a lot, uh, there's a lot of benefits to that. Another one here is public safety. So public safety for um, you know, uses for firemen and policemen. So one example is uh, the golden eye device. So very powerful hardware, very large display, um, fully equipped GPS, compass, speech recognition, and also supports multiple languages. Um, it supports near-field communi uh, communication and has a very powerful camera and also runs extensive software. So here's an example of um, the first-person view. So firemen can wear this. You can go into the danger zone, and they can, um, they can get information about the environment, about any, any victims. So very useful for, for firemen. The next area is that it's other kind of a long tail. So you see a lot of other applications coming up, like music and childcare. So let's take the example of childcare. So the first one is uh, the Mimi onesie. So this, is, this lets parents keep track of, uh, if, they, if their kids need a diaper change, for example, or the Guardian, which helps monitor like, the location of your, of your child or their, their well-being. And AT&T has, uh, has a flip, uh, the new flip phone that's uh, being used for that. And then finally, there's a, a lot happening in the consumer space, uh, the in, uh, infotainment space. And here, let's take a look at a few devices that are coming up. So, the first two are these uh, two watches. The first one is a Pebble watch. This was actually uh, launched on Kickstarter. It, it broke a Kickstarter record. It raised uh, $10 million. And it supports SMS. It supports uh, app development. It has an API. Uh, and it's very extensive. And it's, it's, um, it's already launched. And it's doing pretty well in the market. Another one is Creos. That looks also very promising. It's not yet widely available. But um, it was also launched on a crowdfunding platform, Indiegogo. And um, the difference, the, the, the Creos promises to have a pretty powerful 
voice control and gesture control. So you could just kind of move your arm and it would, it would give you information, it would react in a certain way. Next one here is a Galaxy Gear. This launched, it's doing okay in the market. It uh, runs Android, uh, decently powerful processor, um, half a gig of RAM. And I'll just tell you about a cool hack that you can do if you get your hand on, this, on the device. Just go to settings, go to gear info, change USB debug to true, and then just connect to the USB, and then you can actually sideload apps from uh, Android apps directly on it. So you could actually run Candy Crush on, uh, on your Android phone. On your Samsung phone, if you want to do that. So the next one here is um, space glasses from Meta. I think this is very interesting because this is actually augmented reality wearables versus a heads-up display. So the idea is you, you you wear the device, and then with gesture control, you can you can uh, work on a project, you can you can shape something. And this is very interesting. I think this would be a whole new way of uh, have a whole new sort of apps like. You know, gaming, um, design, a lot of different applications for this. This is also it's in production now. It's a um, pretty, far, pretty, pretty uh, powerful camera, uh, a couple of sensors, and um, access to like accelerometers and other information, other physical information. So developing for the space device is different. It's not an API model. It's actually almost an on-device model. It uses Unity, Unity 3D uh, gaming engine, and that's a very it's a JavaScript friendly engine. So it's pretty easy to start uh, start working on that. It gives you access to the physics engine, the 3D editor, and um, uh, sound controls. The sale price is uh, 650, and the SDK is launching in uh, this December. If you're interested, there's a URL. Check it out. The next one here, I included this because this is very interesting. So this is the Muse. It's a brain sensing headgear. So you put it on and it almost reads your mind. Well, it, it reads your brain, your brain waves and it helps you, you know, you, you can use it to control games. You can reduce, it's a stress reduction uh, instrument and also helps with memory concentration. And the goal uh, for them is to be able to control devices with your mind. And this is real, it's not imaginary. It's, uh, it's, it's launching this, uh, this December. And if you think about it, it's actually not that complicated. It, the way it works is it uses electroencephalography sensors, EEG sensors, the same sensors that are used in uh, ECG, like uh, body monitors in hospitals. And it, it looks for different types of waves. So the delta waves, delta theta and alpha waves, which are, which are active when you're sleeping, then the beta waves when you're thinking actively, and then the gamma waves, which, are, which monitor high mental activity. So just by using this basic information, you can put together and like, reverse engineer what what a person is, um, you know, are they, are they tired, are they, are, they, are they active? So just extrapolating this, you can actually build, read that information and then use it to do different things. Um, so the device comes with, a, with an app, and with the app you can, uh, you can basically monitor, um, you can actually see what your brain waves are, you know, how they're behaving, but uh, there's also an SDK that's in development that can give you access to the of course, the wave information, but also accelerometers. Um, it also has some more uh, additional information on top of that. And then uh, the last one here is Google Glass. So I actually have one on here. So this is uh, so the device. Uh, breaking news. Google Glass 2 just launched this week. Uh, the main difference is uh, it has an earbud. And you can plug in and listen to audio like, directly. And it also supports prescription glasses. So any of you who wear glasses, uh, now you can use Google Glass. So a look at the, the model or how, how, do, how do apps work or how does Google Glass work. The way it works is at any time you're looking at one, uh, one screen or one card. So you're looking at uh, any one card. And everything is on a timeline. So you can scroll in the timeline. And you can check your, you, know, you can see your pictures. You can see an app. You can see your email. If you take a picture, it goes to the starting of the timeline. So everything is on the timeline. That's the model. The development model is actually REST API model. So they ex expose a, a Glass API. And um, you can basically build apps by developing HTML, CSS cards, and then pushing them to the, to the API. And you can also read information from the API. You can read uh, user replies and information. 
So with that, I'll jump into a uh, demo here of Google Glass. Hopefully, I can get this uh, working. So. You see my screen? OK, Glass. Record a video. So it's now recording a video of QCon. There we go. I can see it right here. See? So, and now it's saved on my timeline. I can, I can play it any time. So, the home screen is the OK Glass screen. And you can scroll the timeline, and you can go to your pictures, you can go to your apps. See, so I'm scrolling the timeline. Um, and here's a video that we just saved. So it's, it's on, uh, on my timeline. I can play it. So it's, it starts playing right there, see? So I could, I could share this. I could put it up on, on Twitter. I could put it on any other like, uh, application. So it's pretty, uh, pretty connected that way. A quick look at uh, messaging. So if someone emails me, I can just check. Uh, it shows up on my timeline. I can check how's it going. I can read the conversation right here. And then apps, um, apps push content to it. So this is the New York Times app. Um, it shows up as a bundle. And you can drill into it. You can read uh, information right there. It has pictures. It has text and all sorts of information. Uh, this Twitter integration, uh, pictures, and then uh, voice recognition. So again, like I can say, OK, glass, brings up a menu, take a picture. So that's basically a demo of Google Glass. And uh, that's my talk. Thank you.